Welcome, I'm John Caldera, president of the Independence Institute and your devil's advocate. A little later, we'll do a Capital News Roundup. But first, I told you he'd never work in this town again, and I'm good to my word. Eli Stokel, <laughs> formerly of Channel 31. Well, not quite yet. Not quite yet. Still got another week or two, but... Uh, I, I said, you keep this crap going, and you're out of this town. Hey, you and know now what? you're out of this town. Flexing hmm. that muscle. I should have never that's, doubted you. That's what it's all about. <laughs> all right. You're taking a job and going to D.C. because God knows D.C. needs another frickin' reporter. Like there need to be more people covering the presidential race, don't you think? Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah, forget uh, state houses. You're, you're, uh, you're going to be moving to Politico.com, which is a really powerful news website. They kind of took over the, uh, the competition for The Hill. The Hill was a, was a real mm -hmm. newspaper about Capitol Hill. Politico does that, but a whole lot better. What? Why'd you decide to take that job? Uh, you know, I've sort of looked for opportunities to do what I do here at the national level and, and uh, for a little while, and, and Politico is really one of the few places that really excited me, and the reason is exactly what you said. They do a kind of journalism that, uh, I mean, they just have a very narrow focus. For someone who's done broadcasting, and it's very broad in the truest sense of the word, um, this is all about politics, and there's never a, hey, make it make sense for the idiot who doesn't know anybody. This is for junkies. This is for people who get politics, and it, I think, has brought about a more sophisticated and smarter brand of political coverage, more immediate brand. I mean, some of the things, they're little, they're not scoops, they're scooplets, right? They're little tiny yeah. pieces of information sure. that very for few people care about, but they've been able to sort of dominate the conversation in that space for a while that they've now inspired a lot of copycats at more traditional news outlets to go and say, we've got to be a little more like Politico in our political coverage. So it's just kind of an exciting place to... So the truth that Channel 31 found out about the cocaine habit, that was that a rumor? Is that only partly true? <laughs> well, what? Oh, we'll let that go. Well, All right. Yeah, I, now I'm like, okay, how do you answer how, that? How you What's answer my that? talking point on that to, again? Yeah. But the going, going to national coverage, let me, let me bust your chops for a second. DC doesn't need another reporter. I mean, right now, no, it doesn't. Uh, the Washington Press Corps is larger than it has ever been in history. At the same time, local news coverage it, it keeps getting uh, crippled, whether it's uh, uh, radio reporting, television reporting, and newspapers are half of what they used to be, and those that survive are half of what they used to be. So, you know, we don't need you there. We, we, we need you here. Well, it's nice hearing from folks here that, you know, there, that there's a sense of need and an appreciation for the reporting that I've done and the other people do in this space. And that they make not it very clear. I'm not saying and you I, do good reporting. Yeah, no, right? I, I, I've never said that. Uh, I, I think that um, it's sort of sad. And I, I, I don't leave without some guilt at the fact that you're right. There doesn't need to be one more reporter chasing presidential candidates around or one more reporter running around in Congress. There do need, you know, we do need more people here at the Capitol and in other state houses and covering those things that just don't get covered. Well, I frankly needed uh, a different kind of challenge after doing this for 10 years, was eager to kind of get away from TV and outside of local news and do something a little different. And I think maybe it's sort of ego driven, maybe it's just sort of, you know, what can I do next to challenge myself? But uh, a let's national talk, let's, platform. Let's talk about the local stuff first is, and then, then let's move to the, the, sure. the other platform. You know, I remember the good old days, and we old people love talking about the good old days. Yeah, I remember where I've been here ten days. years, and I'm even talking to some of our our younger staffers like that, and I yeah. catch myself saying, "Oh my God, I'm like the grandpa." Of I'm the, the grandpa. Room. I remember when people <laughs> yeah. read newspapers. Yeah. Like, but we used to have in this town uh, a, a plethora of good local coverage. Both newspapers, I could disagree with the reporting styles, the conclusions, the agendas that I think they were pushing, but they were there. We had capital beat reporters from both the newspapers papers from all the TV stations, from radio stations even, and as that dwindles down, it, it, it goes away. TV news particularly has been difficult for, for the, you, you and I are junkies. We, we live and breathe this political stuff and we follow stuff that, well, it's not the Broncos. Mm -hmm. So it's not the Broncos yeah. who's, who's paying attention to It's not to leading it. the newscast. You're right. lucky if it's buried about 30 minutes into it. Right, yeah. exactly. And before you, Adam Schrager from Channel 9 uh, was kind of the, the, the torchbearer who actually followed local politics. Um, not being a corporate whore like you, he went off to do, uh, <laughs> I think, public, public uh, broadcast in Wisconsin yes. or something. But, uh, but filling those shoes, really, you, you really made a name for yourself as the guy who covered politics under the dome in, in, in a different way. I'm thinking that's not as easy as we complain it. You know, say, hey, why don't you do more of the stuff that I like? My guess is 
on the other side of the equation, it's not as easy as Well, as it I, is a fight every day in the news, in a TV newsroom, it is a fight to satisfy TV producers who really just want newscasts that are interesting and compelling and that are going to appeal to the largest swath of viewers possible because it's a bottom line driven business just like most businesses and they want ratings and nobody is convinced that more politi political coverage or coverage of policy is going to boost the ratings and I don't know that it does and my argument has always been that's not why you do it you do it as public service you plant your flag and you do this and you say we're gonna do this because it's important for viewers that's what Adam did when I got here Adam was the reason I saw someone doing this and said that is the kind really? of coverage I want to do and it can be done on local TV and Adam was a great mentor for me when I started transitioning from general assignment reporting to covering politics he was very encouraging and very kind wasn't threatened by me not that I would be threatening to a guy like Adam Schrager working at you know the almighty nine news in Denver but Adam was a great mentor and a great example of how you could do this. And I think the sad thing is, you know, over the time I've been here, which is almost 10 years, I've seen, you know, two huge things happen in political coverage. One was the loss of Adam Schrager, and two was the closing of the Rocky Mountain News. I remember when that happened, I did a five-minute piece on the TV news about the loss of the Rocky Mountain News and, and how important that was. And I don't know if everybody sort of realized at the time subscribers said, oh, that's sad, I'm not gonna get the paper anymore. But over time, you really do see how that has impacted the amount of, of coverage that we see and the competition. When the Denver Post doesn't have really anybody to compete with, you know, it's gotten softer than it used to be. And the Rocky Mountain News, even if the Denver Post- competition makes better products? You think? Yeah. I mean, you know, so I, it, that's, those are two sort of catastrophic changes to the landscape that have resulted in just less coverage of things that are really important. And that's unfortunate because this is a growing state and it is a, politically, it's as interesting and dynamic a place as there is. So there are opportunities for anybody who wants to go into a newsroom and kick and scream and say, no, no, we're gonna cover this. These are great stories. Here's how we're gonna do it. How did, how did, how did you keep the job? I'm always amazed that Adam, <laughs> Adam was able to do it, and we junkies saw him. And, you know, he's a fair, respected guy, and he was there. Uh, nobody respects you, and you're not fair. But how do you, <laughs> how did you keep how did you keep the job? Because I can't imagine that the program director goes, "Oh, let's see, Broncos," and they're arguing about changing the tax rate on baby formula in the uh, state house today. Which, you know, um, I just blackmailed the manager. Yeah, that's good. Um, no, I think. <laughs> You know, I think that, honestly, I mean, you just have to go in and you have to do it and you have to, I mean, I had a, I threw a lot of tantrums, okay, not tantrums where you're like crying yeah. and kicking stuff, but I, you would get mad. I would have to sort of say, no, 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 I'm, I'm covering this and I would fight being assigned to other things and I think at some point people at least saw enough value in the stories I was doing, the fact that these are stories I'm coming up with on my own. I wasn't one of those reporters sitting in a meeting, I don't know what I'm gonna to cover today. I had to go out and find these stories and convince them they were important. And part of it was making it easy for the producers to say, well, he's already got a story, that sounds okay, I'll put it in the show, and doing that consistently. At first it was working a lot of hours, um, and just sort of making sure that you're meeting the demands of the TV producers and the bosses because TV's still paying the bills. I can write six blog posts a day, but it's the TV story that I had to do to, to really earn the paycheck. And so you have to do those in a way that satisfy the producers. You can't just go to the Capitol and shoot video of a hearing. You have to, you know, do the, you have, when the producer says, make it about a real person, uh -huh. not a lawmaker. You know, you've got to find somebody who's impacted by something. You've got to tell a story for TV in a different way, and that takes effort. Uh, and it, you can't just live at the Capitol when you're doing those stories. Well, and you put out a lot of good blog news. That is, news, you, you gave news for junkies even if it didn't make it onto the nightly news. So you, there, there were blog posts that you, you, you put out. Let's transition to what you're going to be doing. Politico is online. I'm not aware that they do any sort of print or any sort of broadcast. It is it, it is a mecca for 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 Capitol yeah, Hill most, junkies. It's pretty much all digital. Yeah, yeah. it's a website. Will, will you be doing any video work there, or is it all going to be possibly? Written? I mean, they, you know, they they do some videos they put up there, but that's not why people go to Politico. Right. It doesn't drive traffic. Um, and there's a paper that's printed for folks on Capitol Hill to you know Ken Buck can read it in the cloakroom, uh, but. It's, it's a digital site, and it's really, it was ahead of its time in recognizing that, you know what, at the end of the day, everybody is just producing links these days. Whether you're a local TV reporter, you're just tweeting out links to your story. Right. If you're a newspaper reporter, you're doing the same thing. So it doesn't matter if you deliver it over the airwaves or in newsprint or whatever, at the end of the day, more and more people are getting their news electronically and in real time, and I think Politico was quick to recognize that. Um, and I think that you know, trying to be fast and be sharp and compete with everything else that's out there in the digital space, I mean, that's challenging. And I, I see how Politico works 
on the national level, all right? So enough of us will go there that it's going to have the traffic to get the advertising. I'm assuming it's mostly ad revenue that, that it comes forward. Or and subscriptions. I mean, there's a lot of money on K Street and a lot of folks who will pay for uh, subscriber stuff that you and I don't see if we're just logging onto the main ah. site. Pay a lot of money for that every year. So it's financially, it's the model without all the overhead and the printing presses and all the other stuff that you know burdens newspapers, it's been pretty successful with the, its financial model too. You know, here in Colorado, we don't have the same amount of pressure to do that. We don't have people who want to pay for that website. I mean, there's Complete Colorado that does original news and then mm -hmm. links. And I think Todd Shepard does an incredible job. I do too. And But we really aren't, is, is the Politico model the model of the future? I tend to think so. Will there be one that helps in local coverage the way that the Rocky and the Post used to? Well, maybe. I mean, Politico itself is looking at expanding into the states. They were talking to me about staying here and doing a newsletter and making a footprint for them in Colorado. They're doing that in Florida already. Don't be surprised if you see that in other states. I suggested to the folks at my station when they were thinking about how to, you know, continue some brand of political coverage, I said, hey, you know, follow the political model, basically. Hire a young person, give them a laptop, and let them write. And don't worry about putting it on the news. And when the news is important enough, you can, you know, reference it, you can interview them, you can transition that person into an on-air role. But what's most important are the stories and the journalism and getting yeah, those that, out and that getting requires, those on a digital that, platform. It requires somebody to invest in something that doesn't guarantee revenue coming in right, right away. But it's That's not a, a huge thing. investment. It's not a huge investment. You invest seventy, eighty thousand dollars in a salary for a, an on air reporter, you can pay forty five or so to somebody who's right out of college, who's smart and wants to write and will go to the Capitol and track down those stories and maintain a footprint for a TV station in that space. I think it's a smart way to go. I don't know if you'll start to see that immediately, but I think over time just like we've seen TV reporters start to shoot their own video in places and look for ways to sort of, you know, be smarter with your resources in these newsrooms. I think that's another uh, another way to, to look at the equation. When do you move to D.C.? A couple w weeks. A couple weeks. Yeah. What are you going to miss the most? Um, and I'm not talking about the bars. <coughs> and I'm yeah, not Denver's got a good restaurant bar scene. I think, you know, the hardest thing in the last month or so since this news came out has just been saying goodbye to people. And when you're here for a decade um, and you really enjoy being around the people, not just your coworkers in the newsroom, but the people in the political space who really become your friends via, you know, conversations like this and you have, you know, drinks with sources and you just get to know somebody over a long period of time um, going to the Capitol every day or being on the campaign trail. And so having so many of those sorts of goodbye lunches has been, you know, a little tough. It's a little bittersweet because you realize after 10 years, you're leaving you built, a lot you built of the, relationships. The, the, and a lot of networks you made. What are you going to miss the least? What are you going to be happiest to get away from besides uh, me? I say this with all due respect to the folks that I work with and the people who gave me the great opportunity there, but I will not miss the daily local TV right. deadlines. And the, I, I've always appreciated the, the need to make a certain kind of package for TV, but I'm really excited to kind of do journalism in a different way, uh, do more writing, and have it be less driven by you know, the sort of imperatives and needs of someone who's producing local you're, TV you're newscasts. You're not going to be recognized around town as easily. Oh, not at all. Yeah. Not at all. You ready, you ready for that? Nobody's going to be buying you beers anymore. That way, at least, you know, when I wind up on the police blotter again, it won't be a, <laughs> won't be a problem. Yeah. We're going to miss you, and we're going to miss this kind of reporting. It's been great having you in Colorado. And so when you lose a job, get, get back. We'll, I we'll appreciate it. it. So I can work in this town again, maybe. With my permission. All right, I'll come to you first. Thank you, John. <laughs> Stay tuned.